Hello, hello, and welcome everyone to this episode of the Higher Ed Geek Podcast, episode number 48 with Craig Biedemann. Uh, so this is a really fun kind of crossover event this week. Craig is also uh, releasing an episode where he's interviewing me, so definitely go check that out over at EduPunks Podcast. We'll link out to his show as well as all the other cool stuff that he mentions. Uh, tried to catch all of it, but it was a lot of stuff, so uh, may have missed it, but just let us know if you need to help uh, finding anything that Craig mentioned. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we'll link out to his show. Uh, he's been doing that for about a year. Um, really cool vibe and really interesting guest that he has, but uh, Craig continues to talk about his journey. Um, he's another three-peat guest for me uh, that I interviewed a couple of times on my prior show, uh, Student Affairs Spectacular. So you can check out those previous episodes as well if you'd like for a little bit more deeper context for his story, but just really appreciate uh, Craig's time and all that he shared. And uh, he's just a really cool guy. I always know he's good for a uh, really lively conversation. So I'm really glad that we could uh, set up a time to do this and have a cool little uh, crossover event. So after this brief message, this is episode number 48 with Craig Biedemann. Longtime friend of the Higher Ed Geek podcast, Brian Leduc, has launched his latest project in the form of a course called Student Affairs Futures. Check out studentaffairsfutures.com for lifetime access to this growing resource on the impact of AI, changing demographics, and the future of work on the student affairs profession. Exclusively for listeners of the Hired Geek Podcast, he's offering a discount for the first 50 course enrollments. Use the promo code HIREDGEEK50, that's all one word, for 50% off the course, it's a $250 value, and prepare your career for the emerging future of student affairs ahead. We had a pretty easy morning, which I don't normally do. I normally am out and about, but this morning I was like, just going to take it easy because I also have tomorrow off. So I was like, I can be productive tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. So I, uh, I kind of need those times to just, you know, chill sometimes. <laughs> yeah, we're just like, I should be doing something. It's like, you don't have to. You could just, you know, <laughs> you could just hang out. Yeah, because I was... um. I was looking up, like, I know when we spoke before, like, this being kind of a trilogy of uh, episodes that we've done, Um, because, yeah, it was, like, February 2015 and August 2016 when we did the previous episode, so it's been a while since, that was, like, what was surprising, I thought it was sooner since we did the the last episode, but... um, A lot's changed in two years! (laughs) Yeah, so, yeah, we call it a, kind of explore that, um, because, yeah, I mean, I've definitely, like... Like in that time, my life, my life has definitely changed a lot too, but, um, yeah. um, cause yeah, I've been trying to like, uh, kind of flip the script a little bit more. Like it's fun to, yeah, just like not always be the one asking questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's, it's nice. Um, but yeah, so we'll get into all that and I, I, you know, really appreciate you, um, making time for this and, um, yeah, I guess, you know, I'll link out to those previous episodes so people can kind of get a little bit more in depth in terms of like your story, but if you want to do like the brief version of your mm-hmm. professional journey, just so people have oh, that background sure. and then, um, yeah, we'll get to the other stuff. So I'm Craig Biedemann. Uh, I work at UMass Boston where I'm the health and wellness promotion specialist. Uh, I always put specialist in quotation marks cause most of the time I have no idea what I'm talking about, but it's fine. It's great. We're doing fine. Um, uh, folks who've listened to our other conversations know that I, uh, got my undergrad degrees at Oregon State University, go Beavs, uh, and then I got my master's degree at higher at uh, in higher education administration from UMass Amherst, um, which is where I learned how to try to challenge the man in mm-hmm. higher education. <laughs> um, and over the last couple of years, even since we last spoke on a podcast, uh, I have had many life changes which I think uh, will inform a lot of the rest of this conversation. And uh, deeply, one of the things that has uh, evolved the most in my professional journey is um, how I've kind of become attuned with um, my internal anarchism, my authenticity as a professional, and uh, truly trying to like be a punk in the field. Like I've kind of embraced all of those things. And I guess that's kind of what I'm known for in the field. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you've kind of, yeah, like that's like the name of your podcast and that's been going on for like over a year now. Like just yeah. like having that really manifest and show up and um, yeah, just like, you know, proudly take on that moniker and um, exactly. Uh, 
Um, cause yeah, that's oh yeah, and I, I host that podcast, Edupunk's podcast. Look at like you and me doing this thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and that's what I appreciate. Yeah, like you're very much, you know, you've always been, I think, in like an outspoken person in a good way. And I think just having a podcast and having that platform, like it's something that people can like reliably have like consistent, good quality conversations from, you know, you kind of the interview format as well, like talking to a lot of different people and stuff. But um, cause yeah, like I assume most people or a lot of people, it's like, you know, they're going to follow you on Twitter and listen to your show or like, but it also might help like reach other people that aren't on, you know, like aren't on social media or aren't, aren't on it as much um, and those sort of things. So um, yeah, I'm excited, you know, you've been keeping with it and you're powering mm-hmm. forward and keep putting stuff out there. And um, yeah, well, I guess, you know, if you sort of like your origin story, you know, specifically, like it's always interesting to hear kind of more deeply what people's undergrad college experience was like and if that fostered anything that continues to show up for them now or, you know, whether that's like personally and or professionally. But yeah, like what do you feel like your college experience gave to you that still kind of resonates today? Oh, um, I think it ties um, so into what, who I am today because I finally – so like there were a couple years where – after college where I kind of, I think lost touch with who I was as an undergrad. Cause I kept trying to like, I don't know, even getting into this field, I kept trying to be the professional. I thought everyone wanted us to be, you know, mm. and I was saying the jargon and I was taking the pictures. I was wearing, uh, uh, what I thought I needed to wear to like get ahead. And then I kind of lost track of who I was in my undergrad. Cause in my undergrad, I was the kid putting on gigs three nights a week while being an RA while running like part of the school newspaper. So I was like doing a bunch of things and, um, constantly doing, creating, speaking up, challenging people. And like my punk DIY roots in college, 100% uh, inform who I am today. And, um, I think one of the big things that ended up happening in my life was becoming a student body president during undergrad because I was able to kind of show that you don't need to be one of those cookie cutter students to get ahead in college because my running mate and I, one of my best friends, Charlie McGowan, um, we, he had a Mohawk when we were running for (laughs) uh, student government. And I uh, was always in ripped up shorts and band shirts and like, neither of us were quote unquote presentable. So like we, we've kind of always lived that. And I think that even now today, I I keep a lot of that true authenticity um, and grind to everything I do, um, especially even at work now. Cause like, especially during the summer, I wear short shorts and some nice, sometimes a polo or whatever, but like I'm covered in tattoos as well, which is like, becoming a little bit more acceptable in our field at least within the last few years i don't know if you'd Uh, agree but like when i was in grad school everyone was telling me not to get more tattoos and by the end of grad school i had a full sleeve and the other one's getting started (laughs) so it's like the full punk mentality of don't tell me what i can't do because then i'll go do it right (laughs) yeah that's great because i guess yeah like you you mentioned like really continuing to embrace that and have it kind of show up for you, you know, like with kind of, you know, for lack of a better term, kind of how you kind of brand yourself, but it is like, yeah, like making sure you're keeping to that core. And, you know, cause for me, like, um, you know, just like my geeky interests, like I'll sometimes be like, Oh, I don't have time for this or I don't have time for that. But it, like, it comes back up whether I want it to or not, you know, like mm-hmm. I'll be super stressed out and I need to get back into those things. But yeah, like it's, you know, um, yeah, just like knowing who you are, embracing that and being proud of it. Cause like, yeah, people who are like, oh, you shouldn't get any more tattoos. It's like, that's more of their problem. You know, like I, I don't <laughs> need to like, you know, get too caught up in that. It, Cause no. yeah, yeah. It's I, and I know you've been kind of part of those conversations trying to like break down those stigmas of like, you know, being a, t- a tattooed professional. And I think certainly it could be sometimes like dependent on the city or the institution or whatever. Cause I know like living in Baltimore now, it's like, I feel like everybody's got tattoos and it's super yeah. cool. You know, like it's a really kind of artsy sort of city. Um, so it's like, I miss really nice. Baltimore. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess that's, yeah, it was like party. I don't know, like if that was something that you, um, noticed while you were here, but, um, yeah, just well, having, having one, those examples. Yeah. is really positive. One yeah. funny story about being in Baltimore and it ties to tattoos. Um, I was just walking around one night, um, listening to music and just kind of like, 
because I hadn't really lived in a city yet. And that was really my first experience. And I was walking around in a neighborhood where my summer um, uh, supervisor told me not to wander. And Mm -hmm. I, I walked by this like nightclub and there were these two like dude, like bouncer dudes who looked like, uh, like former professional football players, like jacked up black guys who I was just talking to. And one of them goes like, one of them's like, you're, you're, you got some, uh, he was like, you're, uh, you got some confidence walking around here like, uh, at night, like as a white guy. And I was like, Oh, you know, I don't know. People keep saying that this place is so dangerous. I don't know. I feel okay. And the other guy butts in and goes, yeah, this guy's tattooed. Ain't no one going to mess with him. (laughs) Cause we can tell you can take pain. And I'm like, yeah. And also like all the emotional pain too. And then he was just like, Oh, you went deep. <laughs> I just kept walking. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's great. Um, yeah. Cause I think, it, you know, yeah. Like there's a respect for people who like, you know, yeah, it's something that's really personally meaningful for them. It's, you know, you have to put money towards it. You have to put time and it's yeah. like, yeah, like some pain and all that. And like, yeah, you know, I think it's, it captures a, you know, aspect, an aspect of their personality just for the fact that, that somebody has a tattoo and then if it's like visible, they're wearing it proudly and, you know, depending on how big it is or what it is, you can learn a lot about them. But, yeah. um, so, um, well, I got tattooed two days ago again. So, oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw, yeah, I saw a post about that. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. My wife is like, you know, she's uh, Jones and Fernie tattoo. It's been a while for her. So, um, yeah, I'm looking Addictive, forward to like man. being a part of it. Because like I, I, she's, I, I imagine this one, I might like be with her when she gets it or, you know, just kind of be more acquainted with that, uh, that experience and journey. Because it's like she had most of them like when I met her. So it's like, I, mean, yeah. I don't have any. So it's just like it's a whole new world for me. Um, just to warn yeah. you, if you're just with someone getting tattooed, it's very boring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bring something to read. Yeah, yeah, good call. <laughs> um, well, no, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a good. It was like a good kind of anecdote because I think you know, like you're saying, like you, your current work, like you're able to very much show up as you are and not have to feel any sort of way about that. And um, so. I guess if you want to like dig into that a little bit of like what you really enjoy most about your current work, you know, like the job itself, the institution, like being in Boston, anything that kind of comes to mind for you about what you really enjoy about what you're doing now. I think there are, well, there are a few things that I really like about my, the work I'm doing right now. One, um, there is a lot of independence within my office currently. Like it's just me and my supervisor running the wellness education portion of university health services at UMass Boston and our department um, is within student affairs, which helps, I think, to a degree. Some other folks in the office might not think the same, which is fine, but I appreciate it because it allows me specifically to have access to a lot of student affairs y type things, um, which keeps me very much like kind of attuned with like the student pulse a little bit more than I think if I was just stuck in like the clinic setting or the counseling center setting. And, um, so I love that, like my office sits in the spaces with the student centers. And so I'm kind of like, this is also kind of a bummer. I'm the adult on the floor. Mm -hmm. (laughs) If you could imagine how that goes. (laughs) Um, I also just explicitly love that my supervisor, uh, gives me so much independence because, She trusts me to do a good job. She trusts me that I'll show up every day, even though like there, I've gone two weeks without seeing my supervisor, Hmm. like, because we're in two different parts of the campus and she has a lot going on. I have a lot going on. And at the end of the day, most of our communication is via email or text. And it's always like super supportive, trying to help each other out. But we don't necessarily have to be in the same place all the time. And I appreciate that sort of, um, respect and response and responsibility because it really like gives me a lot of uh agency over my work like it makes me feel like my work is valued um and i also really enjoy the fact that a lot of my students are like really becoming um like big advocates on campus for like wellness issues. And I, uh, I do think that I, I can selfishly take a good amount of credit for that. Um, (laughs) because before I got there, they didn't really have anyone talking to them about like overall wellness, sexual health, mental health stuff. And now I kind of just drop in and do a lot of that work. Um, 
with them. And it's, it's really great. And, um, the, the exciting thing right now is I finally hired my first student staff. Um, and we started like last week. So it's very new for me. I have a lot of anxiety over it, but luckily I've studied a bunch of models and I've talked to a bunch of people and I, I think we're going to be good. And the students I hired are great. They're all very different. None of them are like me. So it'll be, uh, good to have a bunch of different perspectives and student uh, experiences to really flesh out um, peer education program that I've been trying to work on for the last two years or so. Um, so I'm, I am stoked for that work, especially since I've seen so many schools do really good work in it. And um, I just want to do that at my campus. And so now I finally have the chance to do so. Yeah, very good. Yeah. It's, I think it's a, um, not anything that I've been directly involved in, but that's like a model of like kind of, you know, peer student health educators and that sort of stuff. It's like, you know, what I, what I see from it, it's, you know, just really beneficial. I mean, for the students facilitating it, but also the students receiving it. And um, yeah, you're able to get like their insights and point of views. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's good that you're anxious to, you know, I always like as the optimist or like the supportive person, it's like, that means you care, you know, you like you want to do a yeah. good job. You want, you know, you want the result to be good. So it's like, uh, yeah, I'm sure that will be uh, quite the journey for you. I wish you the best of luck with that. And uh... Well, I legitimately had like a massive moment of imposter syndrome. Like I know a lot of folks in our field talk about that. Like mm -hmm. it's a thing that's kind of always present. It literally the first time I felt that in this field was last Monday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like that's, I mean, I guess that's a good thing that I felt comfortable over the last few years, but Last Monday, staring at a bunch of students who I've hired, them expecting me to know everything and to teach them everything was like a terrifying moment for me. Mm -hmm. But like at the end of it, I had a good cry. I love crying. We're about to talk about what I'm geeking out about lately. I love crying. I think it's really great. I think everyone can get a good workout from crying. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And, um, but now I feel a little bit better. And so it's just, um, one of those things as a professional, I'm just trying to like, I have a lot of confidence in myself, a lot of confidence in my students. And now it's just like, be a, be a supervisor. And that's, that's the next step. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, and it's like, you know, you're saying like you've put in a lot of work to like get this moving and it's just like, yeah, that like catharsis, that release, you know, like it's like, yeah, I think everybody needs to cry every once in a while, even if, it, you know, like, mm -hmm. sometimes it matters less like what triggers it. It's just like, no, there's been some stuff in there. You need to like kind of get some emotional release there. Um, Cause it's like, yeah, it's like, I don't know why I just like watched this movie or this, you know, TV episode uh -huh. or something. And, you know, that was like the trigger, but it's just like, you know, like, yeah, there was like some stuff kind of boiling up and now, you know, it's finally getting out, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I cry when I cry when I run. Like this uh, stuff just like sometimes comes out of nowhere. And like I was running last week or two weeks ago, and just one part of one song hit me just the right way, and I was like, "Oh no, wow. oh yeah. well, we're gonna take a take a second to to get this one out." <laughs> yeah. Dustin, I feel everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I guess it's like, you know, yeah, the, the kind of segue of just like, that's something that's like, you know, that you experience, you know, you kind of have, I guess, that emotional connection to music. I know, like, is a big mm -hmm. thing for you. And like, you know, the stuff that you geek out about, like that, you know, that's yeah. kind of like the hopeful positive impact. Like, it, you know, it resonates with us. And, you know, sometimes it could be like, oh, I need to pick me up or I need to like, you know, I want to feel a certain way or just be reminded of something or someone, you know, those things we geek out about can be those kind of emotional anchors and such. So, um, yeah, I mean, what are, what are you geeking out about right now? Like, is it stuff that you've mm -hmm. always been into that you've like discovered recently or just, um, yeah, just kind of get into that and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll explore that a bit. So a couple things I'm geeking out about lately, um, I mean, I'm kind of always geeking out about tattoos. I'm kind of always thinking about the next one or how I'm going to fill out my arm or um, mostly because like students always ask me about them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, so it gets me like thinking of what I am going to get next. And like even what I got, uh, what I got tattooed the other day, um, I got like a double sided torch, um, which is my representation of how I'm always burning at both ends, you know? <laughs> and, uh, I got, also got a little bicycle, like an outline of a bicycle. Cause I ride my bike every single day. And that was actually a last second idea. And I'm also, I'm just kind of like to the point where I'll just get something if it like resonates with me. But, um, 
the other big thing I'm stuck on right now is um, Shark Tank. And <laughs> I love watching Shark Tank. And uh, I actually promised Katie I wouldn't bring up Shark Tank, but I love it. And um, as someone who is very much, uh, I guess, social anarchist, who has so many feelings about capitalism, watching a hyper-capitalist show is like slowly getting into my brain too much. But like, I'm going to, I'm going to ride this one out. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe like a guilty pleasure kind of, you know, like it totally is. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's so, I think it's so fun to watch that show. And it's also like two reasons. One, just like the concept of how much money those people have that they're throwing at, these these uh, people trying uh, trying to be investors. The other is you get to see some like cool, passionate projects that people have put together, and just see like the impact they've already had. And like there are moments on that show where the sharks. I hate this that I'm talking about this, but literally an episode I just watched where one of the sharks was like, you've already done fine on your own. You don't need us. And like those moments make me feel so good. Where I'm like, yeah. You are doing great. Hell yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I guess you can always, yeah, you can always watch it for like the people who are trying to get the investment to like not take a bad deal or you know, just like stick it to these like sharks. Like those are the moments where it's like, yeah, you're great. You don't need them, whatever, you know, like cause some people are just like, yeah. oh, like that person just made a really good deal. Yeah. Like capitalism. That's so great. Like, yeah, it's like some <laughs> of those fun words. It's like, no, yeah, stick it to them. You don't need them. Like yeah. you're great. You've done amazing. Like go do your own thing. Um, exactly. Like those are the types of moments where um even with students, I feel like there are some students I meet, they've already got it figured out. And um like I do a lot of talks on like balance and taking care of yourself and I I ask a bunch of questions throughout it. And sometimes some students are like solid. Like they answer everything like they've got it all figured out. And I'll just make a joke. I'm like, "Oh, do you, do you just want to leave this? Like you've got it. You've got this. You want to uh, teach everyone cuz I'll let you." Cause like it'd probably come from you better than it would me <laughs> kind of as a joke, but for real, if you've got it figured out, like zone me out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, that's good. I'm also like, I don't know. I've been on a big anime kick li- lately. And so, um, a lot of folks keep talking about a bunch of TV shows that keep coming out and I'm like, is it anime? And I probably am not watching it. <laughs> Yeah. Luckily, okay. Netflix is putting out a bunch of them, so right. I can just be like, yeah, I love Netflix. <laughs> and I feel like people have recommended, yeah, like, because uh, I think it's one that I've seen you posted about, like, uh, My Hero Academia. Like, oh. that's, that's super popular right now. And, and I, so I, I haven't watched it. I'm sure I'm going to get to it eventually because I'm just also, like, working through shows and just, like, um, yeah, like, that, that I feel like would probably be, like, a breath of fresh air for me. Of, like, I don't know if that, how you maybe, like, got into it where it's just, like, you know, you watch a lot of TV, you can sometimes start to like blur together. They're all kind of like similarly done. Um, but yeah, I guess what, what was sort of like capturing your attention about like anime specifically? Um, and I, I, one, uh, I think Japanese creatives are some of the most original and inventive people. And the, that's one of the main things that has captured me whenever I watch anime or in, like read a manga or watch anything influenced by the Japanese culture. Um, because I truly think that they have original story ideas, original plot lines, um, and they have ways of demonstrating it and illustrating it that like American audiences are completely, a lot of them are turned off to like, you'll have like a classic story of like hero saves a uh, person in distress or whatever. But along the way they're fighting these massive, I don't know, dragon creature things, but like everything is so hyperbolized and ridiculous. And um, I love that. I, I kind of prefer the, the weird, side of things but then i i I actually have to balance it out um like i'll watch an anime that's like super ridiculous and over the top and then i'll watch like a super dark one like uh b the beginning on netflix that one's super dark but then i'll go watch seven deadly sins and it's fun and kooky and weird and then i'll watch a super sad one like you're lying april and i'll cry the whole time but then literally i'll go watch um uh 
Uran High School host club and it's just super gay and queer and everything's pink. So like I'll just like transition. I can't just watch heavy, heavy, heavy or funny, funny, funny. Like I want shows that will help me differentiate the things that I've watched. And even like I started noticing that in a lot of live action TV shows. I've just been like, yeah, I've seen these are predictable. I want to watch something that's like uh, I can't actually figure out what's going to happen next. <laughs> oh. And that's what I love. That's what I've always loved about anime is like, yeah, there are a bunch of them, but you're always going to find like a new bent on it. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. And I guess it's, uh, yeah, it's, that kind of makes sense. And yeah, I mean, Japan just being like, it's, they're huge on, yeah, like exporting pop culture like we are, but yeah, it's obviously going to be very distinct and unique and yeah, just being that kind of, you know, fresh air, kind of like different, you know, perspective and style. So, oh yeah, um, yeah, that's really cool. And um, I think we're hardly yeah. just now catching up to it. Like I know, like a lot of my students. That's actually a really good way that I connect with a lot of my students. Um, and like s- over sixty percent of my campus is students of color. And um, one thing I did not know until I really started to work closely with uh, black students is that a lot of them love anime. Mm. And so I can like walk by a student in like a study like space. They're watching anime and I stop and talk to them about it. And um, it's one of those ins that I didn't think I would ever have. And now I just have students come sit in my office and watch anime while I'm doing like work. (laughs) It's something I did not expect. (laughs) Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I mean, I think that segues of like those positive contributions that the things that you're into like provide to you. If it's like, yeah, I mean, just stuff that you consume, or if it's uh, hobbies and those sort of things. Like, I know, you, I mean, uh, you create your own music, and you know, you're big into music, those sort of things. But just anything that you kind of like geek out about, and like your hobbies and stuff. Like anything else that comes to mind, I guess, in terms of like how those like positively contribute to your life. So that's like a really good gateway. The anime is a really good gateway to how I hang out with students and how I connect with them. But also like even going back to my tattoos, I have a lot of my interests tattooed on me. Uh (laughs) Like I have a bunch of cartoons tattooed on me. Um, I have a bunch of literary stuff tattooed on me. Um, And students will always stop and ask me about them. Like one of the, I have a tattoo of Bobby Hill on the back of one of my arms and that one always gets spotted by people. And what I love about it is it makes other people smile. And that is like one of the best things I can get. And even if it's like my Bender tattoo or my Finn from Adventure Time or my Ninja Turtle, um, like though, like knowing how much joy they bring me and then seeing how much joy they bring to other people is so cool. Like I love that. And that's why – um, like my fa- people in my family are like, why are you getting silly things tattooed on you? Like, cause they make me smile. <laughs> like when I'm having a rough day, I look at Finn and I'm like, you know what? No, I can take this on. Cause Finn would take this on. And so, um, that's like a big positive reinforcement for me. Um, the performing stuff that I do, especially like my spoken word and my music, um, students kind of get wind of that sometimes. And they ask me to come like, open an open mic for them or start it out because some of them get scared to have the first person go. And so I'll go read a poem or I'll go do a song really fast. Like I always have a guitar in my office and I tend to walk around campus playing guitar for people. And, um, that's, that's another thing that's like really fun and was actually something I had to uh, pass by like one of our associate deans of students because she wanted to just make sure it wasn't going to be a distraction. And once she saw how much students were re- responding to it, she was like, okay, this is, I, I, I get it. Just don't be super loud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And then, I don't know. I have a lot of things in my office that students connect with. I know a lot of folks on uh, your podcast have talked about like having pop figures or toys or um, a bunch of art in their office that can get, that bring them joy, but also can bring students joy. And, um, I, I try to reflect that in my work. I also try to have some of my own artwork so students can see like truly the creative side of me. Um, and, um, I am pretty active in our music scene here in Boston. That's one of the things I love about being in this city. There's so much creative stuff to do. And so I actually spend a lot of my evenings with my partner, Katie. We go to gigs, like concerts, and we table for sexual assault prevention, which is like also tied to my work. But it's also just something that we want to give back to the scene. Because when we were going, when we were growing up, 
going to gigs that didn't exist. And so that's also like intrinsically tied to my, um, uh, identity as a, a punk professional. Uh-huh. And so like we tend to have folks on our podcast that also have those kinds of backgrounds. So we can show that an educator isn't necessarily pinned down to someone who works in a college or in a school. Um, it can be someone who is literally going gig to gig to gig, um, playing tunes that are bringing uh, social justice issues to their audience and um, not knowing who it might impact that evening. So I love being in a lot of different circles um, and making a lot of different connections because it's like very much like made me, um, I think, just a better person in general. So, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, and I guess, yeah, I mean, anything else that you'd want to sort of like name drop it, like you're reading, watching, listening oh, yeah. to or anything like that? Because, yeah, like it. I think like thematically and even you know, like a lot of good anime and those sort of things. And yeah. we'll link out to like, you know, your website that has like a lot of your, like your music and those sort of things on it too. So I guess like, yeah, any, like, and it could be any combination or like anything that comes to mind. Yeah. Like other podcasts or like other music mm. or books mm-hmm. or stuff like that. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I love, I know that you, you like to get specific. So, um, <laughs> uh, so I'll take this piece by piece. We're already talking about podcasts um, one of my so I I love the crooked media folks. I'm a classic liberal, but um, I love the what those guys are doing, especially uh, with Keep It, um, which is a really great pop culture. Uh, it actually helps me keep up on a lot of popular culture stuff because I'm not necessarily in the know about it. Mm-hmm. I don't really like to keep up on it, but like I get a little dose of it every week. Um, I also really love uh, Benjamin Walker's Theory of Everything. It's a podcast where he, um, uh, Benjamin Walker, takes a lot of um, topics and kind of explores the real reality and um, the... I don't know. He blurs the lines of real and fake really well on specific topics and stories to the point where some people don't know what is real and what is fake. And he's lost sponsors over it, which I think is super hilarious. And they just get a huge kick out of it. And I love it because it lets me kind of like distract myself into this world that he's created. And I, I really dig that. Um, those are probably like my two favorite podcasts. I'm also listening, um, uh, a lot to, oh, I love the illusionist, uh, because it's all about words and I love words and you hear just like the stories behind words and that is really great. Um, and then like 99% invisible, um, is a really good one too. Um, uh, reading, I'm going through a couple graphic novels right now. I just got the most recent trade of deadly class, which is really cool very graphic so folks who have some issues with violence and or trauma please know that that is a lot of that book um east of west is really great um i just got the new saga trade in the mail i'm glad that it's going on a break because uh holy crap like it is they've crammed so much into that do you read saga um it's been recommended a lot on the show but i haven't gotten to it yet yeah I didn't. I didn't want to get into it because of how much people talked about it. But I get it. <laughs> I totally get it now. Yeah. <laughs> um, beyond that, I've I kind of just been reading some academic books on like pure education because what I've already talked about here. Um, uh, currently, the anime I'm watching is yeah. I'm keeping up with My Hero Academia um, as it's airing. Um, I'm watching Seven Deadly Sins which is great. It's on Netflix. It's weird, but I like that. I like weird. Um, we're watching the good place and the good place is amazing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we just watched this week's episode. Superstore is back and I love superstore. So all about superstore. And then, um, which is, it's funny because we've gotten through this whole episode and I still haven't brought up pro wrestling, but I'm kind of, which is like one of my big things, but I'm kind of like burned out on it right now. Like I'm having one of those feelings where I'm just kind of like, I haven't watched the product in like a couple weeks and I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing right now. So I, I that's like, I guess a symbol or signal that I might be a little busy and I'm okay with that because I'm prior to prioritizing other things, um, in my life, yeah. which is weird. <laughs> that's such a, bu- like, I don't know. I'm just coming to terms with that right now in this moment, Dustin. Oh, wow. 
Well, like a, yeah, like a breakthrough here or something, or just a real. No, um, anyone who listens to this and knows that I run the student affairs clique is like, oh my gosh, are we losing Craig? <laughs> yeah, well, it's one of those things too. Like nowadays, because like you know, like everything's kind of archived. You know, like you could just go back and start catching up from where you left off. Oh, or like, I'm not worried about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's like it'll be there, and yeah, I mean, it just like ebbs and flows. Like for me, yeah, like I've sometimes been like really hardcore into video gaming and then that falls off and like I'm starting to pick it up a little bit like a little bit now and trying to like make time for it in my life because yeah like other stuff was prioritized but I'm starting to realize like you know like I I appreciate having free time and not having to always feel like (laughs) oh I need to you know work on that project or do this thing or you know um, it's just like I can sit and play whatever game I want forever long I want you know or watch my shows or you know movie or something Um, yeah so it's hard. Like, I feel like once we get a little bit busier, I'm starting to like learn some of those adult things that I was supposed to learn years ago. And now it's like, okay, um, I guess I have to make decisions now. And I hate that, (laughs) um, stuff that I'm like listening to. So I think you're aware of this. I'm all over the place with my music tastes, but, um, I'm a big, I'm a big vinyl collector. So I have like a massive collection in my living room and, um, we had like a game night last night, so I was just spitting a bunch of records. And um, right now, one of my favorite albums is by this band, Spanish Love Songs. We actually just had a conversation with conversation with them on my podcast last week. So if you want to listen to that and hear some of them and listen to me talk to their lead singer, who was a former collegiate baseball player, which mm-hmm. was a connection I was stoked to make. And we just talked about um, being a college athlete and how much of a struggle that was. Um, it was really, it's a really good conversation. And then we eat a bunch of cheesecake. So you can hear that. (laughs) Um, I also, I've been loving the new Svalbard album, which I don't expect many people to know, but they're like, a uh, uh, UK hardcore band. That's doing a lot of really good work for, um, women's equity, um, sexual assault prevention, a lot of really good, uh, messages in their music. Um, also really love this band, uh, Culture Abuse, I'm going to see next week. And they're like, their new album is like, If the Beach Boys Were a Punk Band, which is my favorite. <laughs> um, and then I would also suggest new Foxing album, which is like really emotional, like literally emo music. Um, the new Me Without You album is really good, but they're like my favorite band of all time, so I'm biased. And then I would also suggest people check out um, the new Haley Hendrix album, and that is just like pure folk gold. Gold. She is a lovely human being, and that album is chill and beautiful, and I listen to it like nonstop. But yeah, that's what I'm listening to. Those are the records that are spinning lately. Um, I'm trying to look over to see if I have any newer things that – I should have brought up, but if folks want to know what I'm listening to, you can check out my Instagram because I'm constantly posting records. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. And uh, I think it's a lot of good recommendations, kind of giving folks yeah. some, some homework, depending on what they might be um, you know, looking for. But um, yeah. I try to provide a nice swath of yeah styles in there <laughs> yeah that's what i like yeah like people hit on each and like maybe provide a couple different options for yeah. you know, different things so um i appreciate that uh but yeah we'll wrap up the episode here as we always do if you just want to share um just kind of wrapping things up on an optimistic note uh something or things uh that you are looking forward to in your job life and or the world hmm so my peer health educators getting that going is like the thing that's been on my mind a lot. Um, so I'm just really excited to see how that goes. And, um, I'm taking them tomorrow night, uh, Monday night, we're recording this on Sunday. Um, but I'm taking them tomorrow night to my gym that I go to, which is a gym, um, for people in recovery. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm six years sober from, uh, alcoholism. That's a fun thing to throw at the very end of the podcast, but (laughs) But I've spoken about it a lot, and yeah. I feel like, especially if you've listened to my podcast, you know this. Um, but uh, it's a gym called The Phoenix, and you can also hear me talk to a woman that I worked with, uh, Andy McConey, about this specific gym where we try to help folks who are struggling with addiction, substance abuse, uh, get clean through fitness. And 
the gym has like a rock wall. It has like CrossFit classes. It's gotten me into truly taking care of myself and my body and the way I eat and the way I exercise and just kind of like um, making sure that I'm actually taking care of my body. And so I'm taking my students there tomorrow night for rock climbing. And I'm super excited for them to nice. do that nice like staff bonding thing. Uh-huh. Uh, I haven't even talked about running yet, but running's actually taken a little bit of a backseat in my life only because I've, sh- I've shifted from doing nothing but mileage because I used to do like 50 miles a week to paring it down to running shorter distance, uh, a little bit of a faster pace, just so I'm like, switching um just the the types of muscles that i'm using and i'm finding that it's actually getting i'm actually taking care of myself and yeah. that's a big that's been a big change in the last 2 years since like we last had a podcast chat but um i've been trying really hard to just take care of my body so i'm not like literally while i'm burning at both ends i'm not actually burning myself down so um yeah. it's um really exciting work that I get to do, especially at that gym and with the wonderful people. And it's actually like shifted a lot of my perspectives on like how I view the military and veterans, because a lot of folks who come through are former military veterans. And a lot of them have substance abuse issues. A lot of them are addicts and they got no support when they got out of the military and just learning through their stories and through their determination to get better. It's like, I'm, I'm a pretty, anti, uh, military industrial complex kind of guy, but I have learned so much and I'm just like full fledged want to support veterans in, uh, recovery now. And that's like really taken a big part of taken on a big part of my life in the last three, three months, three months, this change has happened. Uh. And, uh, I, uh, that's, a, that's one of the bigger things in my life is being a part of that community, taking up rock climbing, taking up CrossFit, something I never thought I would do. And I know you've talked to Wayne Glass and I know <laughs> that he would love to hear this and we're going to compare thighs next time I see him. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, those are like the big things I'm excited for right now is my students continuing to take care of myself, um, and ultimately, a lot of the new creative stuff I'm doing, I just announced a new performing name. I used to go by another musician, which was terrible and vague. And now I go by Fragile Bird. I just posted a new, a brand new music video over last week. It was actually posted on Friday, which is the third anniversary of my father's death. Mm. And so the song is meant to be the last thing I'm writing for him. Uh, and also how I got over my eating disorder. So there's a lot there. I know I just crammed a lot into the last couple of minutes, but um, the last few months of my life have been like truly transformative and I feel better than I've ever felt in my life. And um, anyone who's seen me over the last couple of months, I think has kind of noticed that. So big changes. <laughs> yeah, that's great though. I mean, yeah, it's like a lot of stuff that's happened recently and sort of like looking forward to the future and stuff that'll, you know, continue to have a positive impact for you and others and, um, yeah, it's all just like, I think, you know, I'm sure some of that stuff, if it's just like, you know, week to week, it, you know, it gives you something to look forward to, or, you know, just really, um, you know, you're continuing to build that community uh, there in Boston and um, kind of, uh, yeah, just investing in good, good energy and um, doing good work there. And, um, yeah, I'm glad you're, you're feeling better. And just like, yeah, because I think yeah. it's like, you know, sometimes, you know, it's the whole idea of like people doing like a fad diet or like, you know, some sort of... Um, even yeah. fad workouts like CrossFit. Like I looked right. at it like, why do people do this? And I get that there, there's like different types of communities for folks who do CrossFit, but like doing it around people, some folks have like ankle bracelets on. Some folks are literally in halfway houses. Some folks are, don't actually have a place to live and they're just there trying to get healthier, trying to just get a workout in and be in a community. I love being in that space. I'm not around a bunch of like dude, bro, CrossFit people. I'm around like truly like human beings that are just trying to better themselves. And like, I love being one of the folks that can help support that. Cause I'm, I'm truly comfortable in my sobriety. And I, I don't think I'll, I think I'm at the point where like, if I would have relapsed, I would have relapsed already, <laughs> uh-huh. but uh-huh. you never know. You honestly never know. So, um, yeah, that's like 
the wonder of getting over the idea of not wanting to do something just because everyone else is doing it. So yeah. Uh, yeah. am I actually punk anymore, Dustin, by the end of this? You know, I'm doing everything because everyone else is doing it. I'm watching Shark Tank. You know, who am I? <laughs> I mean, yeah, like very self-aware. I'm like, you know, like, yeah, like the, the the stuff that you're consuming or doing, you know, yeah. But uh, no, I, I, like you said, I think you have to try to like wrap it up with the bow. It's like, you know, that mindset, that philosophy, like being a punk. Like I, I'll joke with people that I feel like sometimes I have like a knee jerk kind of punk response to things where it's just like, you know, just kind of like, let's just do it. It's not like sit around talking about it. Let's just like make the change. Yes. Like we're, you know, just kind of like getting it done versus, you know, kind of making you know, a big deal out of it. Like, right. So like, just I, go do the work. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I think, you know, that's, I appreciate that. That's, you know, always kind of a North star for you to like, kind of look back on if you, you, you know, you need that guidance, but yeah, like at the very least, you know, not feeling like you have to be this, like, you know, yeah. Like stoic going it alone or whatever, you know, like you're trying to take care of yourself in a sustainable fashion, build a community and be supportive of other people on their journeys, wherever they are in that. And, um, you know, yeah, just doing work, whether it's on campus or off, you know, in yeah. your neighborhood there, just, uh, you know, doing what you can to help folks. And um, I think it's also because I, I think like how you're framing it too, like when you go to shows, like almost, um, you know, never really been part of those scenes or anything like music's, you know, just never been one of my like top geekdoms or anything like that. But I can appreciate yeah, like yeah, again, yeah. that community, but like almost reshaping maybe what some people think it means to be a part of the like, you know, punk scene or whatever. It's like, no, we're here yeah. talking about like important stuff. And like, you know, uh, I don't know, like using that energy towards like trying to make positive change versus almost just being like, which is easy for a lot of people to do, like just being cynical and just critical and just like kind of being like, everything's awful and there's no point in doing anything. It's like, no, yes, things are awful, but like, let's try to, I don't know, like use that energy to like, you know, make a positive change for things. And, you know, me as the, eternal optimist like I, I can appreciate that however people kind of come to it um just making sure people feel supported feel safe you know feel like you know there's stuff to look forward to and that we can you know because it's not like oh things just get better by like nature it's like no it takes people like doing the work like we have to actually take action to make things better like that's not just like a law of the universe that like mm -hmm. things always get better it's like no it depends on people making it better so um you know whatever way again whether it's through like you know kind of reshaping and making like punk scenes more positive or something or if it's like you know through yeah like a crossfit gym you know like you said it's like that's yeah. the last place you would expect to find it but it's like oh. yeah yeah it's it's there and it's great and that's it's, it's really cool to hear that you've been able to be a part of those things i did not think i would and even like the first the day I, the right when i came back from the first workout and i was talking to katie and i was like um i have to go back and they were like what I was like, yeah, I, it's just a wonderful community. And so for the longest time, I thought I could do all this stuff alone. And now I'm realizing, no, I need people around me. And I think that that is one of the biggest things you, we can do as people is sometimes we need to learn when to give up control. And um, that's something I'm learning to be better with. So as long as we're doing that, I think we're, we're, we're going to be okay. Yeah, well, that's a perfect place to end the episode. I, I you know, appreciate, yeah. you know, all that you shared and, um, really good stuff for people to, to plug in with and connect with and connect with you and, and your work. So, um, yeah, just really appreciate your time. Thank you, man. I'm really glad that, uh, we got to have another conversation and I'm excited for folks to hear me interview you. Yeah, well, stay <laughs> tuned for that folks. We'll, uh, yeah, I think we'll probably have to cross link in, I think, you know, either episode, we can just kind of, we're going to have to, over. yeah, it's a special um, week in higher ed podcasts. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, cool. Yes. Definitely go check out my episode on, uh, Craig's podcast. So we'll link out to that as well. This podcast is part of the connect edu podcast network bringing together diverse voices in the higher ed community. Check us out on Twitter at connectedupod or at connectedu.network. Thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode of the Higher Ed Geek Podcast.